Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Trattoria. And in the previous episode, we introduced the Industries DLC, and in this episode, we're going to continue down that path. We built a forestry industry and an agriculture industry, and today we are going to round it out by building an ore industry and an oil industry. We're also going to take a look at some of the free features that came with this DLC, such as toll booths, uh, marking buildings as, as historical, um, and, and a couple of other things, such as uh, I believe that Postal Service came with this, this DLC as well, and the Cargo Airport, which I'm not sure that we have unlocked yet, but, but we'll take a look and see if we do. So to start out, uh, there's something different that we're going to do with these industry areas. So with our previous industry areas, we, we had the entire uh, spectrum of buildings that we used to create it. So not just uh, processors, but also extractors, and we had our factories as well. We're going to create an import based industry. So you're able to import the raw material and skip some of these extractor buildings. So it would be the equivalent of getting rid of these, just having the processing buildings over here. And that's what we're going to do for our ore and our oil industry. And we're doing that for a very specific reason. And that reason is that I do not have the mod enabled that will allow me to preserve all of my um, all of my resources. So for the oil and ore, those are resources that can deplete over time, and I do not want to uh, need to, to relocate this industry around the map. You can certainly do that if you want to, or you can enable the mod that will make that make it possible to never deplete the, the resource. So if we were going to focus on where the resource is located, we would have we could have oil right here, right here. We could have our ore industry in the nature reserve. Uh, or anywhere out here, although we'd have to unlock tiles for that. We have a pretty significant oil deposit right here. So we could certainly do that. We only need our extractor buildings right here. We don't need to have our processing there. So we could certainly have extractor buildings in this area and then processing over here where there are no resources, but, but that's not the route that we're gonna take. We're gonna do something a little bit different. But uh, before I get to that, I noticed one quick issue that I wanna resolve, and that is uh, there's a mod that snuck its way into this build. That's the 81 tiles mod. And if you don't enable that mod, it can make things sync. So what you'll see right here is that my Metro line is not in the, it's not connected. The reason why is these are not actually connected anymore. They're floating. So we're going to delete these a bit. And then I'm going to redraw these lines to make the connection. And this should fix them. It's just one of those things that you can, one of those mod sorts of issues that you can have. And this is gonna be important because I'm starting to see that traffic is backing up. Okay, so now that should be fixed. So this is very important for us uh, because again, I mentioned that there, the traffic is backing up here. It's not looking so good. And there's a reason for that. Uh, and this is something that we're gonna to wanna to resolve before we begin our next industry build, which we're gonna build right over here. The main reason for that is that we are focusing all of our traffic onto this road right here, Main Street. So whether or not you're getting on the highway or you're crossing over here, you're going to the industry area, you are going down this one road. So we are funneling a significant amount of traffic onto this road. So if we come over here, we click on our info views and then we go to our traffic routes, we can see this. Every single trip across the road is going here, as are our highway trips. So we have a significant amount of traffic there. And if we look at our traffic, we can see this is very dense, heavy traffic flow. It's still moving. So we still have 89% traffic flow, which is really good, but this will break down. So before we get started on anything else, I wanna fix this. So we're gonna call a bit of a mulligan on our factory, which is fine because it never was connected anyway. <laughs> so we didn't have water there. So uh, as much as I talk about water pipes under roads where they belong, I didn't do it. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna take care of that now. So that with this relocation, it does have water. This will start producing furniture, which is great. So what I want to do, we have a collector couplet here with one way roads. We could take a look at this. We'll click on our roads. We can see that we have one way this way, one way that way. So what we're going to do is make a connection over here. We're going to bring that over here and cross the highway and have another junction. So we're going to take an industry road. We're going to pause this for just a moment because I'm going to take out the power lines. Let's just bring this over here. We'll bring it straight out. Now, I want this road to almost match this. So I'm gonna add a temporary road there. 
And that the main reason is I want to cross the highway. So I'm going up three tiles. And then I have this right here. And then I'm going to drop it down. Once I hit 12, get that nice bridge. I'll bring this over 12 again. Drop it down. Perfect little bridge. Love it. So now what we're going to do is use our curved road tool. I want to line this up perfectly with this local road. You might say, well, why are you doing that? That is madness. Well, there's, there's a method to the madness. You're going to see in just a second. So we're going to use our curved road tool, line this up, make a nice connection here. And now I want to take this one way and meet it up right here. So we're going to connect that over. So now what this is effectively doing is it's branching off our road. So we're branching off this collector into two different directions. So this one would go here, this one would go here, and uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be really good for our traffic flow. So that's the main thing. And then I want to have another connection over here. So I chose this location very specifically. So the reason I chose this location is, well now I have a direct connection between our two cargo terminals. So you won't need to go over the highway and, and clog up this, this interchange. You'll be able to make that connection directly, which is a big benefit for us. You'll also be able to make a trip to the factory without going through the interchange. So this is going to be a good thing, and I think it's going to see really significant utilization. There's only one way to find out. That is to get this thing running again. So let's do that. And I want to speed this up just to see what happens. Okay, so we're seeing some utilization of this, and I have, a, I have a feeling that if we click on this, yeah, we have a lot of trips going and using this route now. In fact, if we go here, we see a division between the two, which is great. I am noticing one other thing that is alarming me a bit, and that is because of all of these right-hand turns in here, we're clogging up this lane. I think there would be value in upgrading this to an arterial. And now at least there are two ways to make that turn and that is or one way to make the turn and one way to go straight if you want to go straight and that's a good thing because our, our queuing distances are backing up into this roundabout and that is eventually going to interrupt the ability to enter the highway or exit the highway or enter it so things are looking significantly better in this area now and uh, I, I appreciate that we have another path to get over here i think that's a good thing we don't really have a very strong uh, local collector network right now. We have our main collector heading this way, and then we have this this set here and this one here, and really nothing else. So we're going to need to focus on that, and that'll be something that we uh, we need to emphasize. But for the time being, we can't buy any tiles, and this is what we're working with. So let's start out, and I, I want to build a small oil industry. So what we're going to do is I want to mirror this road. We're just going to keep this against the highway. And we're going to have some local roads forming the backbone of this uh, of this area. So I'll start out by mirroring this. This is one that I thought I could get away with using the curved road tool, but this is the, the exact scenario where the curved road tool doesn't work well. And that is when you have a, a lot of angles to make quickly. So that's that's OK. We can we can certainly use all of the tools at our disposal to make this happen. And sometimes it won't be perfect, and that's okay too. You do the best that you can. And we don't necessarily need to maximize density anyway, I just want to make a real clean look here if I can. So we're going to form our oil industry back here. It's not going to be anything all that significant. It's just going to be a, a, a bit of a, an industry for us. So let's go in here. We will add in our main building. We don't want to place that off from our, we don't want to place that on our arterial. We'll place it off a collector or a local road. So, or rather that we don't want to place it on our collector. We'll place it off a local road. So one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that this building needs a bit more space. It's okay, we'll place it right here. There we go, we've unlocked a whole bunch of things for our industry. The small oil pump, this uh, this uh, sludge processing plant and a crude oil tank. That's exactly what we need. We're gonna skip the oil pump altogether. We're gonna place an oil tank and a processing plant and that should get us a functional oil industry. So again, we need to paint our oil industry. We'll come through and do that. 
We're going to make this the Will CS Oils Incorporated. So Will CS is a content creator and one of the mods on the Discord server. Go check it out and uh, you'll most likely run into Will. Great guy, excellent creator. All right, so I'm just creating a, a small backbone in here. We're gonna make this a very dense industrial area. So I'm not overly concerned about this looking natural because it's just a dense industrial area. So let's, let's go through. So we can skip the oil pump. You're going to have this processing plant. So this is very small, but it has 70 workspaces and processes 4,000 units per week. So that's pretty extreme. That's you know very large. And then we have these crude oil tanks. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna back these up to the local road. We'll place a couple of them. And then we will have our processing plants. And I almost, because of the size of these, I'm gonna go through here and add another road. This is not the most space efficient layout, but it's gonna work just fine. So we're gonna place our water pipes underneath our roads where they belong. And now we need to get power over here. So there's a couple ways that we could do that. And I think the, the approach I'm gonna take is going to be to actually paint an area over here, a district area. See what we have at our disposal. We could actually make our own oil industry area, which would make this area look a bit more natural. So I think we're gonna paint just a general area over here. We might, we might replace this in the future. But for the time being, it'll give us a really nice look here. So we'll make that crude square and we will get some oil industry located off from here. I'm gonna skip that row along the collector here. And this will make our connection for us. And what you'll notice is that we're gonna get these really neat looking oil buildings. Now, even if there isn't oil on this land, instead of getting uh, extractors, we'll get processing. It, it'll just make the whole place look a little bit more reasonable and realistic. Let's see, yeah, we, we, don't, we have some. <laughs> and interestingly, that's not what we're building. <laughs> so that said, it is, it is, it is looking like, like it is a, a, a functional plant. Interesting. So we do need water here now that we've zoned. And then we need to set these up. So we're gonna set these to fill and that will help us import the resources that we need. So this is gonna produce petroleum and we need to be able to store the petroleum. So now we're gonna grab a warehouse and again, we need a place to store things. We'll store petroleum here. And then we're gonna set these to empty so that we export all of the petroleum that we create. So this is important because you can't actually, you can't import petroleum. So uh, to have this resource at our disposal, and actually let's set this to balance because we are gonna have factories that use this. So we'll set this to balance. So we're gonna import our raw material, oil, which we can do, and then we will process it into petroleum. So we're gonna have a bit of traffic to start out as all of these oil tanks are filled, and then eventually it'll dissipate a bit, and we're gonna start to see this happen, which is our sludge uh, paralysis plant, py py pyro pyrolysis <laughs> uh, plant, but it's processing the oil now. Uh, that we are importing. So we have an oil industry that is functioning entirely without uh, any extractors. So I like doing this for ore and for oil. I think it makes it, uh, it, it just, it makes it a bit easier to manage those industries unless you're gonna have mods on. So another thing with, with all of these different plants, you get your own uh, fences. So if you wanna liven it up a bit, you could go in to your oil industry, choose your oil industry fence. These can connect up to the sides of these industries and you could line these areas. So there we go. And we didn't maximize, we didn't use all of our, our units out here. We could certainly add some trees out here if we wanted to, 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 to spice things up a bit. And why don't we? Uh, that's something I like to do. Uh, it makes it feel a bit more natural. And considering that this is really not the, the best thing to look at from across the highway, you'd expect that, that there would be some sort of landscape buffer to shield the views of this from the residential. Now, this is a very, uh, at this point, a city that has a lot of industry. So 
uh, maybe they're maybe they're okay with the views. That said, I still want to do something. There we go, and that is a nice looking little industry. And now that we have petroleum, which you'll see if we click in here, we we have warehouses that, that have a pretty good stock, and we have uh, and well we're we're let's see we have let's look at our workers. So we have enough workers to get to the next level. We're just waiting on resource production. We would be good to go. So while we're waiting on this, I thought it might be nice to do the same treatment that we just did over here to our agriculture industry. So I know that there were some comments about how barren this area looked. I agree. We can, we can liven this up by having some zoned egg in this area. So let's snake a road back here. We can add in some of our farm fences. And now what we'll do is we'll add another zoning district here and paint a district where we can we can specify that this is for agriculture. Now this is really important, especially in this area, because if we were to pollute this, we would end up basically poisoning off our entire district. So we want to make sure that we're going through here and we specify that this is a farming industry area. Very good. We can just sprinkle in a couple of farms here. So it'll be farms or processing. And then we'll add some water pipes down here. And I see that our sewage treatment is teetering, so we're gonna need to take care of that before we run into problems. But you'll see that now we get some more, uh, some more agriculture buildings. It looks a little bit nicer. And you could go as wild as you want with the fences. So you can snap these. And one of the neat things about this asset is you can snap it to the sides of buildings. You can make some really interesting areas like that, add a tree or two, not too many. Again, you will deplete the resource and you don't want to do that. You could add a couple, you could add some rocks. So go into your landscaping menu. I wonder, I don't know if the high vegetation depletes it. Why don't we check that out? I don't think it does. So you could go through here and decorate with some high vegetation and some rocks. Maybe like one tree. <laughs> just, just really, really careful about that. And it just gives a bit more life to this area. You don't need to go wild with it, but, but just this little bit gives us some extra life. So certainly things I would encourage you to do. So things are going well for us. Got this area moving in the right direction. Let's work on our sewage processing, and maybe we'll even revisit. The zoo a bit which is now a four star zoo even though we haven't done anything to it <laughs> so just the, it just show, goes to show you that you have a little bit and a lot can happen so what we're going to do is just add on to our key wall here and i want the angle on so that we keep this straight I'll just add one more and i pause this for just a moment so i can make the connection we'll get it rolling again very good. And now our sewage treatment matches up with our water availability. Very good. So we are trying to reach a population of 30,000 today and we haven't done anything. We're already halfway there, which uh, leaves me feeling encouraged. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm happy about that. I think that we are going to add on a block or two this way. And uh, we could look at increasing density in between kind of our high dense density corridor along Main Street and this Biffa's Rock Park if we wanted to. So we're going to take a look at that. But again, I said I wanted to focus on the zoo a bit. So let's do a bit of zoo work. So I want to see what we don't have right now. And I believe that we're missing some of these larger enclosures like the giraffe enclosure. So yeah, the giraffe enclosure is one that we're missing. So we will add that here. And I think rather than continuing to branch out, we're going to Line that up right next to this one. I believe that we also are missing a monkey palace. And I'm wondering, where can we sneak that in? Seems as good a spot as any. Now we have a lion and a rhino enclosure. And that uh, we've reached level five. <laughs> so I also didn't snap this to the road, so it's wanting that right now. So we've done that, and I believe that this is the back of the enclosure, which is fine. We'll take care of that. But let's place our last couple of buildings. So we have a rhino enclosure. 
and then our lion enclosure. And that should be most of what we have. We could certainly add in our amphibian uh, enclosure, which is a bit, it's a bit more challenging. And every now and then, you kind of struggle with placing one of these. And I, what that's telling me that is that it doesn't want to place it along, along the path where I wanted it to be, which is fine. That happens. The beautiful thing about these self-leveling paths is that you end up in a situation where it just does all of the work for you. I don't need to do any grading with some of these facilities. It just, it just works. And I love that so much. So I'm just going to make a connection here, and then we're going to use our curved road tool to, again, once we have our road guidelines on, make a nice smooth connection. That is beautiful. What a nice connection there. It's almost so nice that I'm reluctant to, to put in the line enclosure be, in the location I was going to because everything fits so nicely. Oh, and our oil industry is leveled up, so we'll need to get there in just a second, but we unlock our petrochemical plant. Um, another oil drilling rig that we're not going to use, a factory, barracks, and crude oil storage cavern. So some good stuff there. So what I'm doing is I'm moving this antelope enclosure. And I'm going to place the lion enclosure right over here. And of course, it doesn't like what I'm doing. <laughs> and when it's when you're struggling like this, it can be really frustrating. So I'm curious, I'm just going to move it there and then I'm going to try to use this move it type tool to relocate this on my own. And that can be a bit easier sometimes, especially when it's it, the, the kind of the kind of facilities that you can struggle with are the ones that have the pads already built in. And that's exactly what this is. Yeah, and that's that's not going to work the way I was hoping. We're going to need to think about this a bit more. And I think that my thought is going to be It'd be great to just move this down here and we'll make our own connections to it. It'll kind of be the centerpiece of this entire area. And then we'll use our curved road tool to make our connection. And even though it's not perfect, it's gonna look really good. Maybe not that. <laughs> and then we're gonna use some landscaping to make this look a little bit better here. There we go. So we need water to get this going. We can clean this up. And now that we've reached level five, I am going to make that, that Parks Pass a reality that I spoke about earlier on. We'll add that there. And now we're going to encase this in, in a fence and where our zoo is done. So it's not the most elaborate zoo in the world, but it does the trick and it's it's pretty nice. I, I, I think that this uh, isn't bad. <laughs> our nature reserve has reached level three. Let's slow this down a minute because we are getting lots of things happening for us. And I think that we're going to skip the nature reserve today. We'll come back to that at some point. It shows you that this stuff takes time. So here I've used my angle to, to help overshoot things a bit, make the connections and then get rid of the excess fence. I find that to be really helpful. And then you can go back through here and delete some of the excess fence so you can re reappropriate that land, do something more significant with it in the future. And I like to follow this dirt road, the, the dirt line on the side of the road. It makes a real clean connection. There we go. And we can't leave this without a bit of landscaping, so we're going to do that right now as well. All right, now Zardis has the good experience with landscaping. So. I, I like this and I've left a little bit of land open here. We can have some sort of development, maybe a path behind it and make it an interesting space. Uh, so I mentioned that I want to boost up the population just a bit. I think we might do that right next to this park. We'll make a nice, look, nice little road here. Turn on all of our guidelines again. And we will demolish some rocks. I'm sorry, Biffa. <laughs> Bring a road through here. And we're going to be we're not going to do a lot in terms of development today. We're just going to go through here and develop a bit back here. So I was going to come all the way down here, but I see that we have some uh, topography. So I don't want to get too wild about that. So we'll come through right here with that road. We'll back this out, bring this back in again and make a nice connection across. And I just want to have some single family homes in here. 
Nothing all that wild. Then I'll upgrade this. And I did leave a space here. That is for a path in the future. I'm probably not gonna do that right now. We'll add some landscaping in the center. And we'll just let this go. Very good. And I think that we might also add a spot for some corner shops. We might even include some commercial over here, some small scale commercial near the zoo. Give folks an opportunity to buy some stuff in their neighborhood too, which is always a good thing. All right, I, I, I'm feeling confident that we're gonna reach our population milestone. Um, so I might just leave that. Maybe I'll do one more thing. So I'll go through here, I'll add one more block in this area. I'm gonna turn road guidelines off because at this point it's, it's kind of messing things up for us. Now we'll turn it back on. And we'll just have one more block of residential. I know that we could use some commercial, but at this point, I'm not super excited to about pursuing that just yet. And that's really for our workforce's sake. Okay, we're making progress. I'm feeling good. So let's get moving on our oil industry again. So we've got a two-star oil industry. We are producing petroleum, and now we can look at our other buildings that we have available to us. And basically, so we, we now have right here, a petrochemical plant. And what this is going to produce for us, we're gonna be using this to produce polymers, which can be used for things like plastics. So we're gonna to wanna to add that over here. And I mentioned that we're not gonna save everything in this little district that we created. And, and here's where the, the rubber meets the road. That was a bad pun. <laughs> not, not, not even a pun, just a bad, bad, sorry. <laughs> And we'll add those over here and we're going to need some storage for the processed good over here as well. I think we'll add two and we will set this. Let's take a look. This is producing plastics. So we're going to set this to plastics. So now we are going to export some of this while we, while we have the ability to. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking this raw oil bringing it over here, processing it in this plant, creating plastic, storing that in our warehouse. And that gives us the opportunity now to create some more finished goods. And in fact, I do not believe that we produce anything else in the oil industry. All we do is we, we can have bigger versions of this. So you don't need to max out all of your industries if you don't want to. You can just leave them kind of as they are and uh, have a two star, three star industry and you'll be just fine. You don't need the most profitable industry ever. Um, but what we do need is we do need to take this. We have these two things and we can now, we can now produce a unique factory good. So let's go back into our factories and we'll see that we have a soft paper factory, which you need crops, paper, oil or petroleum and plastics to create soft paper. We now have all of those, which is amazing. So we can, we can do that. We also right here have lemonade. We don't have glass, so we're gonna have to wait until we have our ore industry done. We now can, we have a printing press, I believe already, so I don't think we need that. Household plastic, we can do that now. See, we, we must not have our printing press. So we can, we, can, we can work on that. And in fact, I probably wanna put that over here anyway. So let's place our printing press. Right now, we'll place that over in this area. So the one thing to think about, here is we do have noise pollution, not a big deal, but we also have pollution pollution. So we're gonna wanna probably keep that away from this area. So what I'm gonna do is create a, a little area for our factories where we can pollute and not, not. I mean, not, I, I don't wanna say you don't wanna worry about pollution, but we don't have to worry about it in the same way. Clearly we don't want our tree-lined streets, so we will upgrade these industry roads so if we wanted this to be a nice curve for our factory vehicles we could back that out a bit go into here and make it a nice curve that's what i would expect to see in an industry industrial area like this not a you know not even a 90 that the, you know a sharper angle than that so um we'll go through here and i want to keep the pollution away from uh, our, our our forestry industry because i don't want to pollute that and take down its production. 
So we'll go through here and we can see the area of influence here. So we'll back that just a little ways away from there. And if we wanted to get really tricky with it, we could certainly come through here, add a road and change this since this road will likely function as kind of a local collector. And then we'll need to make our power connection. And now we're gonna need unique factory goods here as well, uh, the storage. So I might just place a large warehouse to serve this entire district because I know that I'm gonna have multiple factories over here. And unique factory goods, it uh, you can store any of them together. So it's not, they're not gonna differentiate. It's producing printed products. That's a unique factory good. You can store that. It's the same thing as, as a household chemical. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that as well. So we'll take our household plastics. Let's give that some space. In industrial areas, I would expect to see some space in between these factories. You can see that we have some terrain challenges here that I might want to try to work out. Yeah, we've got a dip here. And in, in this kind of area, I would expect to see this filled in. So why don't we go ahead and try to smooth this out just a bit. So what I'm gonna use is our soften terrain tool. Actually, I'm gonna skip that altogether and we'll just, we'll do it in the most harsh way possible. <laughs> so I'm giving a bit of separation, like I mentioned, in between these buildings. And then I want some additional pads to get through here so that we're not completely dependent on that one way into this area. There we go. Nice connection. We could have even more parallel connections if we wanted to. There's no problem with that. So at this point, we have our household plastics factory. They're going to be taking things in from over here, bringing it here. We've got our printing press. They'll come from over here and take it in here. So we are moving in a good direction. What else could we build? So we can't do our lemonade factory. We could do our soft paper factory, which would take things from both areas. And look at the size of this building. It is wild how big it is. So let's get rid of this road here so that we can place this. We want to look at our terrain first and we can see that we have a problem. So we're going to want to, we're going to want to again, go through here. I'm going to level this. We'll worry about fixing the terrain afterwards because we would expect this to be totally flat. That is a massive building. And look at what it does to this area. It really, you, you start to see the scale. This is blocks big. So that is really cool. And it's gonna take in crops, paper, petroleum, everything within close proximity. Everything will work out really well for this. So I wanna make this fit again. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a terrain. Maybe I'll even grab the, the highest terrain. We'll pull that out. So we just want to back this off from the road a bit. And then we're going to use our feather tool. And if you have key anarchy, because you're using mods, this would be a place where I would absolutely consider adding a key wall right here. There are ways to do that without key anarchy. Um, they're not fun. <laughs> so I'm not going to dump raw sewage in here just for the sake of, you know, making this look good. I don't have natural disasters enabled. So I can't use a normal, you know, clean water outlet to, to flood this temporary, create a key wall. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you could do to try to make this work, but we're not going to, we're not going to go there. That said, this is not going to be pretty everywhere. So we're going to need to do something. And maybe that is just accepting a bit of a terrain change and trying to make it blend a bit. So rather than having this building create that, that cliff for us, we just do it on our own. And then I want to remove the landscaping from there because I don't think it would grow well there. That'll make it look a little bit more natural. And then just to top it all off, I want to connect this road down here. I'm going to make this a one way to connect right into there. But before I do that, I want to use my plateau tool. I'm going to right mouse click right here. And then I'm going to use, or I'm going to yeah, right mouse click here and then left click where I want it to start going up. And then what I'm going to do is add a straight segment in here. And now I can use the curved road tool to make our connection up. And we can upgrade this. Just another way to leave this area and get up here. Probably not entirely necessary, but uh, it could be a little bit helpful. And we could certainly, if we wanted to really get 
you know, make some sort of circular connection. I'm actually, this is, this is nonsensical. We're just going to have a normal connection here. It'll work just fine. So this is going to be filling up with unique factory products, and it's going to be coming from this soft paper factory. It's going to be coming from the household plastic factory and the printing press, and it'll all go into the large warehouse. We're not creating lots of lots of traffic here, and that is great. One of the things I'm going to do, I just I hate the way that the texture looks in vanilla for this. So I like to go through here and just add in some of these. Uh, they call these high vegetation four. <laughs> I think they look nice. Cover this up a bit. You could also use rocks. And if you are a better person than me, you can just accept it as it is. It is just uh, something that, that really bugs me. <laughs> so I'm going to do something. I don't want a bunch of trees here, but I do think that this looks a little bit nicer. Very good. Very good. We're looking good here. So the other thing that might work really good back here is Postal Service. So Postal Service is located in kind of a weird spot. You go into Transport, and it's it's back here under Postal Service. So you can work a post office without a distribution, without the, the post sorting facility, but they are helpful in that they help you process more mail per week. So what we're gonna do, I wanna look at our Postal Service. We have okay service, we have one facility here. I don't know that we have any other ones. We do not. <laughs> Let's add just a couple throughout here. And I don't want to take out all that much density, but I, I see that there's a couple places that are upset. That might be a place to look. I guess this person's not upset, but we'll, we'll take it out. This faces a very specific corner, and I like to make sure that we face it on those corners. So this raises happiness. Um, it, it, it's It's... I think that that's about all that it, it actually does, is, is make people happy. Um, but it's a, it's a nice facility to have in, in there. It's a nice mechanic. Another thing to do in your city. Slide just a couple of these. Some neighborhood post offices. We'll add one more over here to serve our tourism area. I kind of expect to see that as well. And then we're gonna add our sorting facility we're gonna have, make sure we have direct highway access. This does not create any pollution, but it does have tons of noise pollution. So maybe we can look at some of this land that we have available here and uh, use some of it in a positive way for us. What I think I'm gonna do is take a look at our terrain. It's pretty flat here. We're gonna add in a local road connection. We're not gonna connect it up and we will add in this facility right here. And I just wanted this to line up really nicely with the facility, so I deleted it and added it back in. So these stop signs or, or, or traffic signals are likely not warranted, so we're going to take these out or we'll replace those with stop signs. We'll do the exact same thing over here. Here as well. We don't want people stopping. This, this distance is not long enough, and it would create lots of traffic problems over time, and we don't really have them. We have heavy traffic volumes, but we don't have traffic problems. And I want to keep it that way. So now we're going to quickly create an aura industry. And I think we're going to add that right over here. And this again will not be fancy. It's going to be functional. So we'll go through here and again, we'll click on our aura industry. What, the first thing we start out with is our main industry building. I'm going to place that right here, right on the corner of this road. And that will unlock uh, our, our ore mine, sand storage, and our grinding mill. So again, we're going to skip the ore mine. We don't need that because we are going to have an import-based uh, industry. And so this, again, is a lot of fun, in my opinion, and it's also very functional if you don't want to deplete resources or get stuck into a specific area with them. So, Glade Ore Products, I kind of like that. I think we might, we might leave that one. And there we go. We've added redundancy to our network over here so that's a good thing and I am curious we've added a lot today and I'm not sure where we are at with our garbage processing I kind of want to check that quickly we're okay okay so let's get working on our industry area so we're gonna skip the ore mine we don't need that we're gonna move right on to the grinding mill what I'm gonna do is add in a road back here this is where we're gonna focus everything I'm not gonna connect it up this is a cul-de-sac right now, so we will want to make a connection in here. We're going to need storage. 
for our sand. And then we're going to need processing, which is our grinding mill. And I've added in three of these, and you can tell that we didn't check our topography, we didn't respect it, and as a result, we have we have upset the apple cart. So let's go ahead, let's take these out. We've got plenty of money at this point, and see if there's anything that we can do to improve this. <laughs> yeah, we can move our industry area because it's it's in it's in a bad location. <laughs> that's what that's this is telling me. I chose the wrong location. It's okay. We'll call a bit of a mulligan. Now we'll place our mills over here. Now I want to make, I want to mirror these and I want to double check it. It looks like it's perfect. So I just kind of guessed there. I tried to measure a bit. It got a bit tricky and I figured I'd just give it a shot. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta be willing to take a chance with your road. Give it a go, see what happens. That's exactly what we did and it worked. All right, so I want to again set this to fill because we want to import our sand that we're going to process here. Back this out, give it a bit of space. We'll add a road here just for some separation, a bit of variety. And then we need to expand our ore industry area because we moved it. We could close this off. I don't know that we're going to. We might actually place some of our storage off that main road. We will create another tier over here. So we've got plenty of grinding mills at this point, and now we again have this as a cul-de-sac. So we should fix that, have our road going down, and we're gonna need to be able to store metals. So I'm gonna go through here, we're gonna look at our terrain and level this out a bit so we can have some storage right up here. And we'll see what we can do to fix this after the fact. Oh, and look at that. The oil industry has now leveled up, reached level three. We have unlocked a toy factory, oil storage, and large oil pump that we will not use. So we're good there. And so we, we could, in both our uh, farm and in our oil industry, now be thinking about, uh, you know, having some of the workers' barracks. Those are not necessary, nor are the policies. I do think we want to have the automation and the logistics. And I want to make sure we have that over here as well. Uh, we do have that and we could even have the safety supervision if we wanted we're not making a profit yet but that's a little bit misleading because we are making a profit with some of our our factories and i would imagine if we look in here we take a look we are making a significant amount of money including in our factories in fact that's where we're making most of our profit so uh, we, we we could be very happy about what's happening with our industries at this point so i am going to try to improve the look of this. I don't think it's going to work all that well. We always have our old standby to make this look a little bit nicer. And then the other trick that we have at our, at our disposal is fences. So we could go through here and add in the uh, ore industry fence, which I actually think is a out of all the fence packs, one of the more attractive ones. I've used it in other areas as well. The thing to, to pay attention to with these fences is that they do have a front and the back, some of them do. So if you were to go back and add these after the fact in the opposite direction, they can get kind of wonky looking. So just something to be aware of. Uh, this one, I don't think it matters so much, but there is a front and back. See, the front has the, the slats every, uh, basically twice as often, so. Or maybe not, maybe that's just because it's short, but that, just something to be aware of you do get that variation. That's interesting. Very interesting. Neat. So we do need to set these. We're gonna set these for metals. Now I didn't mention any of the things down here. So you could store normal zoned uh, products. Uh, you, you can certainly, especially if you have a commercial area that's suffering, you could import or move some of those goods over that commercial district. Outside of that, I'm not exactly sure why you would do this. Uh, but it's it's certainly something you could do if I guess if you wanted to. <laughs> so, but that's that's one way to resolve not enough not enough goods or whatnot. You could move some of those uh, some of those goods over there in this way. So now we have our little industry area, and we're gonna start importing right here. We are filling this in. We have ores. We're just waiting for some of this stuff to get moved over here. So let's speed this up and watch it naturally move over there. 
and there we go. Now they are all operating. We are in a good spot. So this this throat length is really short. So throat length being the distance in between uh, these two roads right here. Th this is not advisable. And in fact, to, to resolve this, I might actually make this a one way road. Because at least then we are backing this up and we could create kind of a circular movement through here. So we have this counterclockwise movement and that will work out really nicely because then there's no stopping there and you see that that immediately resolved the traffic issues here. And thinking about the directionality of all these is, is really helpful. Here's another spot where maybe it would make more sense to reverse the directionality of this. Now I did place all of my factories with the previous directionality in mind, so now there's going to be lots of looping. But this would certainly be another way to resolve that. I am going to turn it back because I don't want to change all the factories because it's working just fine. That said, think about all of those things. And even here in our new ore industry, uh, at least now when you come in, you drop this off right here and you leave. And now they have to come through and, and take it up here and then they have to come all the way back around. Maybe this isn't the most efficient layout. It will work, uh, but you know, if you wanted to really micromanage to get amazing traffic flow, that would be one way to, to do it. And you start to see that we've got, we're starting to see more traffic issues. And that's really emblematic of a couple of things to me. Uh, we have one highway entrance, we have, have growth, we have a lot of importing of products. Uh, thankfully, with the location, now that we have this this highway overpass thing here, we, we, we can now uh, import goods from this cargo train terminal and bring that right over here. So that's a that's a benefit of this overpass in this location, but we're still starting, starting to see some traffic issues and that's something we're gonna wanna keep an eye on. So I mentioned the other things that came with this build. Uh, so we, we did also receive uh, cargo har uh, airports and cargo airport hubs. The other thing that came with this was uh, toll booths. So it came at the time that this was released as part of a free update. So we could certainly go through here and add toll booths. So you, you wanna take a look and make sure that you're adding the right one. So like right here, this is, is a one way toll booth. So if we wanted to add this on the highway, we would add that here. This right here is a, a two-way large toll booth. So if we wanted to discourage the traffic from using this as a kind of a cut through, we could certainly add a toll booth here and that would discourage the traffic or at least generate some income for us uh, for using this particular route. I think the one place you generally see it quite frequently is along the highway. We could we'll pause this for just a moment. We could certainly come through here and they kind of snap when they're in the right place. You just want to make sure that your directionality is right. And if we want to get these lined up really nicely, you can come through here, make your connection, back that up a bit. Come back to your toll booth. Directionality is correct. And now we can make our highway connections. There we go. So this will slow traffic down. And, you know, I, I could have gotten really uh, particular about this and leveled this. In fact, I might. Oh, interestingly, the second time around, it is not lining up perfectly, which is going to bug me. So I'm going to work on getting this right. And the way that we're going to do that is we'll use our freeform tool. We'll get this to line up nicely. We'll come through here. And we can get much more specific than that, but... This is probably close enough, and I don't want to let perfect be the enemy of good. I've already done that by trying to level this, and it didn't quite work. Uh, so we, we could get really particular about this. If this were a a more uh, formal build that I was going to be living with forever, I would absolutely spend a whole bunch of time deleting this, re-adding it. But this probably wouldn't be where I would add it anyway. This is more of a demonstration. I don't really use toll booths all that much, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I think that they're they're fine. Uh, they don't generate a ton of revenue. Uh, and if you're going to do it, you need to make sure that it, it is in a place that makes sense uh, so that you're capturing it on both the way in and out. So if we were going to have it here, we would probably want to have this on both sides of this ramp uh, at a minimum to, to make sure that we're capturing anyone leaving uh, going either direction. So something to think about. 
So you see that there's a significant amount of slow down here. Let's speed this up. We'll see what happens. You can see this. That is not a great treatment. It does happen, uh, but there's a way to fix this. If we go into our city planning, we're going to have an automated toll booth. Now they won't have to slow down to enter in there. They can drive straight through. And we'll get a revenue. So there still will be some slowdown there, and you'll see that. That's to be expected. We'll generate some revenue. Let's look at what we're making here. And it's it's 200 bucks. <laughs> it's it's something. It's something. Uh, 177, 175. It's fine. We'll leave it there. And uh, I guess discourage people from using the highway. You could also go through here and adjust the amount that you're you're charging. Now that said, you cannot adjust the price for large vehicles and small vehicles independently of one another. When you slide this around, it just goes up and it's it's equal. So it is certainly a way of, of, of you know, pursuing transportation uh, demand management if that is something that you are interested in doing. And that's certainly something that, you know, transportation planners do do. So uh, I would I would recommend you take a look at it. But why not? Okay, so we have our ore industry. It's still chugging along. Let's add some of our policies again. Make this a more attractive place to work. We have plenty of workers. We need resources shipped. And we can now add in some of our more of our factories. So at this point, we are missing just a couple. So we have this toy factory. We have all of the goods for this. So we have plastics, wood, and paper. So we can certainly add that. I do think I want to add a road here. Not that kind of road. <laughs> And then we will add our factory along that road. And again, topography. So the struggles of not respecting the topography. We're going to move this temporarily. Look at our terrain. And smooth this out once again. This is a very hilly location, which is fine. It just means that we need to really treat this area with care. And I'll back that off the road so we don't get any, any significant... Uh, you know, tearing and, and, and odd stuff happening. We still have a bit. I can just scooch this over just a little bit. And that'll fix some of that for us. I might need to move this over just one. And hopefully that makes it just a bit easier to smooth this out. And feather it back. And that'll be, I will accept this as good enough. We will use our landscaping to improve. Now, the thing I like to keep in mind when I'm creating these sorts of districts is you can have some cul-de-sacs internal to here. You don't need to fill in all the land. You can spread the buildings out and make it feel like a significant space. A lot of times in these sorts of districts, you would see the buildings spaced out far from one another because they, the owners of these facilities are anticipating expanding in the, in, in the future. So the land is cheap. They're going to buy a bunch of it and they're going to leave themselves the ability to grow. Now, we know it's a game. They're not growing anywhere. But that's kind of, if you want to maintain that aesthetic, that is one thing you could do. So we do not have glass right now, but I know that we are going to get it soon. So I am, whoa, 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 going to try to place this plant, but it's way too big. So we might just place this right here off from this road. We'll give it a bit of space. And then one of the things we can do is turn this off so we're not charged. And then we can try to work on this. In fact, we're going to do that right now. I will call them all again. And again, we have this terrain issue that is going to just create issues there. We need to make sure that we're paying attention to that so you don't spend lots of money like I just did <laughs> trying to fix something that could have been easily resolved by doing a little bit of research up front. So I regret that. Smooth this out just a bit. And then again, we can turn this off for the time being while we wait for this to level up. And this is a good opportunity for us to build some residential so we can close out this episode at some point because we are in a spot right now where we do not, we're not going to meet our goal. So I'm going to extend this out and I'm envisioning this kind of being a, a lower density area over here, very desirable area. And then again, we're using all of the tricks that we've learned 
So our curved roads, we're using our freeform tool. We are kind of ad-libbing here and there, just making this feel like a natural roadway layout. Something that, you know, this would be, these are just people that are designing these roads. So, you know, if, if random developer can design the roads, you can too. Because a lot of times they're just following the terrain or uh, doing what they think is gonna make them the most money, which is maximizing their saleable lots. So uh, I think you could do that. Here we go. So we've now created a grid here. It's not a perfect grid, and that's fine. That's that, I'm not I'm not into perfect grids, but I do like how easy they are to implement. I also like the way that they look. The connectivity is nice, and we have now created a nice little area right here. We do need to fill this in, and we are going to need to look and make sure that we have city services because I think that this is lacking pretty significantly over here. Let's focus on that up front. So we're going to have a little pot of, of services. So that's fire, that's police. We're going to need to take a look at our education, our death care. We could also take a look at some of our other services like elder care. We could certainly add that over here. Children's health care. And I just, I'm creating kind of a local main street in this area which is incredibly beneficial. We also are teetering on our elementary. We do not have a high school. We could add that over here as well. And I might do something a little bit nicer. Uh, we are gonna add a library. And actually, I don't have any additional high schools or elementary schools, so we'll just use our defaults. And again, we will add in some parks behind these to make it feel a bit more alive. So next to our high school, we're gonna add in and we add a couple of basketball courts and by our elementary school we will add a small park well it's small playground and we could have a little commercial district and maybe add in some plazas we also do have i mean we get, we've got to keep in mind that this is a significant park and that will boost land values over here too and then i'm going to just kind of go through here and in one big swoop go ahead and zone this we want this to be densely packed. It's desirable. Ooh, and then we have leveled up to level two in our ore industry. We get more ore storage, glass manufacturing plant, steel plant, barracks, and underground mines, which we will not use. <laughs> so there we go. We have zoned and filled this in. I am going to leave a spot to leave this area for our path, which we will add in the future. Now this will fill in and hopefully help us reach our population milestone. All right, so let's focus on a couple of more things in our industry area over here. First of all, we need to expand it. So we're just going to pull this out a bit. And we are going to add in a road over here. We're going to take a look at this. We have another ore storage. It's a larger ore storage. We don't really need that. What we do need is glass manufacturing. So you're gonna add a couple of those over here and then we also need a warehouse to store these and look at that, it's just too, uh, oh, if I get really finicky with it, maybe I can, nope, I'm too close, that stinks. And it looks like it's just right, oh, I just, I clicked a whole bunch and was able to make it, just make it work. <laughs> so I made that respect me, <laughs> so I'll take it because that's a win in my book. So roads underneath, or <laughs> water pipes underneath the road. We have our ore, we're making glass. We'll put our glass back here. And now we can resume this, turn it on, and we will bring our glass once it's produced into this area. And we will produce lemonade. So we have a crops, glass, lemonade, we do not have storage over here for this, but they'll just drive it down here and take it into this large warehouse, which is quite all right. We'll take a look at our factories. Is there anything else that we could add? For the time being, we have industrial steel, which is where we take our metal and turn it into steel. This is huge again. So no way are we placing this in any logical place right now, <laughs> unless, unless we just let it kind of hang out over here. Look at our terrain. You would need to do some work here to make this happen. And just for the sake of placing all of these, I do think. Yeah, we're going to we're going to place it. 
Now again, remember, that doesn't have to be your goal. Your goal doesn't have to be to place every single factory. You could decide you only want to have one industry and, and, and live with that. But if you want to see how these all operate, you want to maximize your profit, this is certainly an approach you could take. And again, the road not around here not necessarily needed. I'm adding it for aesthetic purposes. And if I wanted to maximize the efficiency here, I would add in a storage over here for metals. And then I'll set this to fill and we will fill this up and I'll take it in here. We need water over here. There we go. I'm going to speed this up so we gain some population. And I think that commercial is holding us back from meeting our milestones. So we might want to think about that a bit too. And we could certainly go through here and add workers barracks. That's uh, an option. I've mentioned that before. Why don't we add a couple for this particular industry? And again, what this does is improve the efficiency of this of this district. And you see that we have an efficiency bonus of 20% here. If we were to look at our oil industry, we have 8% efficiency. And we could increase that by adding these barracks. Our work efficiency, 115%. That is good for this industry area. It means that we're making more money. So that is a good thing. And we're making a ton of cash now because of this DLC. And it's it's really, it's really impressive. So I am gonna go through here now, and I think we're gonna mix one thing up. So I went through and I just zoned all of this as residential. And I think that if we take this and add commercial along this road here and solidify this as a commercial corridor, you're gonna actually see this entire area develop more because that's what is really missing in this area. I'm gonna stub some roads in Maybe I'll actually formalize these. Now we at least know the next block that we have here. So if I decide to zone up and down here, I don't have to worry that I've got to demolish these in the future. There we go. And now we have a nice little commercial district through here and that's developing quickly because we needed that. So our population is a bit of a struggle at this point. And that makes me wonder, do we have all of our utilities? We're doing okay with our health care, our elder care, our death care. We are doing okay. We do have some sick citizens in this area. And part of that is the noise issues that we have here. We can resolve some of that with some health care facilities. We will do that. Over here, it's pollution. I know that by the mix of land uses. So I will take care of that. Then the other thing I want to do is increase the density in a targeted way. So let's add some density along this corridor here. We'll connect these two higher density areas. Now I am not increasing the commercial density that will make noise that will make it uninhabitable for the residential properties. And now that we've done that, I think that we're just going to let this go for just a minute and simulate and we're going to watch our population increase. Okay, so you can see that we've added a number of buildings. Interestingly, our population has not yet rebounded. But we're making progress. Our traffic flow is still holding up. And in general, our biggest issue is commercial. So I might look to add a bit of commercial as well, make a small commercial district. And I think I'm gonna do that right here. So the main reason I chose this location is I wouldn't have to extend utilities out. I did add in these tree-lined streets. That doesn't match the aesthetic of this area and it doesn't have parking, so I will remove that. That will look a lot better. We could continue to have these narrower streets, with a, which I think makes it a bit easier not to have lumpies and bumpies. So uh, that's certainly an approach that we could take here. Look at that. Our traffic flow is just through the roof. And now we're starting to see our population really take off. And I think that we're going to be able to hit our milestone in just a moment. Let's let's just let this go.
Okay, and we hit our next milestone just by waiting and being patient. Capital City, this is important because we unlock a new tile. We get ships, harbors, cargo harbors, and uh, that's gonna really help us out in our next episode. So I'm very pleased with where this ended. I hope that you learned a lot today. Uh, we've certainly increased the city. We've created a significant industrial area at this point that really adds to the character of the city. And we have made a lot of money in the process. Let's have a brief city tour to take, uh, and take an inventory of what we've done. I hope that you've been like this. If you did, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider uh, doing so. And I will see you in the next one. Here's the city tour.